How dead is Tim Shaw Tway? Walking into the mall feels like an exploration. There are many empty shops there, and the elevators are broken. It feels like time traveling back to the 80s. Hong Kong has become a dead city. Hello, behind me is one of the two dish rice restaurants in Hong Kong. As you can see, two dishes cost 25 Hong Kong dollars. Even for three dishes, it's only 35 dollars. This is the ladies market in Mong Kong. The situation of two dish rice here reflects Hong Kong's purchasing power. If business here gets better, it indicates Hong Kong's economy is declining. That's why there's so many people coming here for two dish rice. The so-called two-dish rice means two dishes plus a portion of rice. Of course I'm not making any money. If I were making money, would I still be doing this? I really can't make much money. The only money I earn is all through very hard work. Just hiring a chef costs 1,200 Hong Kong dollars a day. But how much can you earn in a day? Hong Kong was once known as an international financial center, world-famous shopping paradise, and gourmet heaven. However, since the implementation of the Hong Kong National Security Law in 2020, coupled with three years of strict pandemic control, Hong Kong has earned new nicknames. The ruins of an international financial center, a dead city full of shopping malls, and the boon for the poor, the two-dish rice. This is 852 HK Walker Channel. In January 2024, it shows walking vlogs in different districts of Hong Kong, such as Mong Kok, Prince Edward, Jim Sadre, Causeway Bay, and Temple Street. The man in the video says, Now it's after work hours, but as you can see, there are not many people are dining out, even those eating out mostly buy lunch boxes. Do you know which businesses are doing the best now? Restaurants selling steamed rice, where you can get a lunch box for just over 20 Hong Kong dollars. Pork chop rice, meat patty rice. Now a counter-economic phenomenon is, the cheaper the goods, the better the business. This video can be said to be a microcosm of Hong Kong's current economy. The market in Hong Kong in 2024 is worse than in 2023. In the second half of 2023, a large number of Hong Kong people traveled abroad, such as going north to Shenzhen, China for shopping, while many local shops in Hong Kong closed down in large numbers. This lady, in an interview with Hong Kong Media, HK01, said, Even I feel that it's a bit expensive, 70 Hong Kong dollars for just two skewers. I bought one skewer of squid and one skewer of beef, and it's already 70 dollars. At the end of January 2024, amid a continuous decline in the property and stock markets, and with the market in a state of gloom, the Hong Kong government launched the Day and Night Vibes at 18 Districts initiative. This is another attempt following the previous Hello Hong Kong, Happy Hong Kong, and Night Vibes Hong Kong events. How effective were the previous events? Government officials were vague and evasive, brushing over the issue with remarks like, some businesses reported earning tens of thousands of dollars. The reality is this. Eerily quiet. This was December 24, 2023, during the Night Vibes Hong Kong event in Victoria Park. Every year on June 4th, Hong Kongers used to hold events here to remind people not to forget the 1989 Tiananmen Square Massacre. However, after the implementation of the national security law on the 32nd anniversary of the June 4th incident in 2021, the police invoked the public order ordinance, closing off areas such as the Central Lawn, Jogging Track, Basketball Court, and Soccer Field in Victoria Park. They warned that anyone entering or lingering without permission could face up to 12 months in prison. Subsequently, the authorities held events here for the Mid-Autumn Festival and Chinese New Year. Although there were activities like riddle guessing and lion dancing, it remained desolate. In the hearts of Hong Kongers, Victoria Park had already died. In the words of Hong Kong citizens, these events aren't stimulating the economy, they're stimulating businesses and citizens. Regardless of how citizens and businesses react, and how effective they are, the government continues to roll out the day and night vibes at 18 districts initiative. It runs from January to May. According to officials, it is organized by the Home Affairs Department together with the new district councils. It consists of a series of activities that showcases Hong Kong's regional charms and traditional culture in 18 districts, including bazaar, art exhibitions, music performances, and sport events. The organizers state that the activities are suitable for people of all ages, whether they are citizens or tourists. 
Among them, the Year of the Dragon, Quentin Night Bazaar, welcomed its first Saturday crowd on January 27th. Perhaps due to the weekend, there were comparatively more people in the afternoon. However, visitors generally complained about the high prices of snacks. So expensive, even more expensive than a two-dish rice. Looking at the prices in the photos, I won't go there. All this fuss about vibrancy here and there is just expensive night markets in different areas. Yes, the era of shark fin with rice in Hong Kong has become history. Shark fin was originally a pricey ingredient, only appearing at luxurious wedding banquets in Hong Kong in the early years. In the early 1970s, with the booming stock market in Hong Kong, Hong Kong citizens could easily make a lot of money in a short period of time through stock trading. Eating shark fin with rice was an implication of a wealthy lifestyle. Times have changed, and now Hong Kongers find it too expensive to pay 40 Hong Kong dollars for just a chicken wing with rice. Hello, Hong Kong and Night Vibes, Hong Kong. Better off visiting the night market. 30 Hong Kong dollars for two boxes of rice is more in line with the people's sentiments. The Hong Kong government once naively believed that when the pandemic is over and border crossings resumed, it would usher in retaliatory consumption from Hong Kongers and tourists, and Hong Kong's economy would return to its former glory. Retaliatory consumption became popular during the COVID-19 pandemic. It refers to consumers' higher consumption and entertainment spending after a suppression of desire. Unfortunately, after Hong Kong's border reopened, the government did not see the expected retaliatory consumption, but rather saw retaliatory outbound travel by Hong Kongers. Travel platform Klook conducted a survey in 2023, which showed that as many as 96% of respondents plan to travel abroad at least once or more in the coming year, an increase from the 77% in the 2022 survey, reaching a post-pandemic high. Nearly 70% of respondents plan to travel abroad two to four times a year, doubling the 33% recorded in the 2022 survey. 40% plan to travel abroad three times or more, indicating an increase in the proportion of Hong Kongers traveling internationally and more frequent trips. More than 70% of respondents plan to increase the average spending budget for travel, compared to the 50% released earlier in the 2023 Asia Pacific Traveler Behavior Survey. More than one third of Hong Kongers plan to spend 30,000 Hong Kong dollars or more on travel expenses. The data also indicated that young people aged 18 to 26 were more willing to allocate budgets for travel expenses than other age groups. While Hong Kongers engaged in retaliatory outbound travel, did a large number of tourists visiting Hong Kong help boost the economy? Unfortunately, the answer is that half of mainland tourists don't stay overnight in Hong Kong, but Hong Kongers spend massive amounts of money in mainland China. The Hong Kong government announced the reopening of the border in January 2023, around one year ago today. According to data from the Immigration Department, approximately 34 million visitors came to Hong Kong in 2023, with 79% being mainland Chinese tourists. These tourists are different from the Chinese people first visiting in 2003. At that time, most mainland tourists were the high-end customers, in other words, tycoons flush with money. Their main purpose in coming to Hong Kong was to eat and shop. With the support of the spendthrift mainland tycoons, mainland tourists dragging suitcases through famous shopping areas in Hong Kong, such as Jim Sa Jui, Causeway Bay, and Mong Kok, were often seen. They brought considerable economic benefits to the Hong Kong tourism, retail, food and beverages, and hotel industries. According to official data, since the introduction of free and easy tour packages in July 2003, the number of visitors to Hong Kong in 2003 was 15.5 million, increasing to 65 million in 2018. In terms of visitor spending, the total was 33.5 billion Hong Kong dollars in 2003 and soared to 328 billion Hong Kong dollars in 2018. However, after the border reopening in 2023, these Chinese tycoon tourists disappeared. Because the pandemic also severely hit China's economy, those tycoons may now be struggling with high mortgages and car loans. Where would they have the money, time, and mood to travel and spend in Hong Kong? In their place are groups of Chinese uncles and aunts who embody the fine tradition of living frugally in China to the fullest. And those backpackers are extremely adept on how to travel in Hong Kong without spending a penny. What benefits can these tourists bring to Hong Kong's economic growth? See what the scenes look like when these aunts and uncles travel to Hong Kong. 
From the images posted by people in a group chat, we can see a large number of mainland tourists gathered on Tokwawan Road eating two-dish rice. Now, let's look at the first-hand experiences shared by these Chinese tourists on social media platform Little Red Book. Someone said, every time I go to Hong Kong, I have to go to the peninsula's restroom. Its toilets are much better than public ones. Another person commented, my group also goes to the peninsula to use the restroom. You pay nothing and still get to enjoy five-star service. According to data from PartnerNet, a website designed by Hong Kong Tourism Board, the average expenditure per person for non-overnight visitors to Hong Kong in the first half of 2023 was 1,278 Hong Kong dollars, 84% less than the average 8,212 Hong Kong dollars spent by overnight visitors. As for mainland non-overnight visitors, the average expenditure per person was 1,345 Hong Kong dollars, 82% lower than the 7,605 spent by overnight mainland visitors. It is worth noting that the average expenditure per person for overnight visitors to Hong Kong has been on the rise in recent years, reaching 5,818 Hong Kong dollars and 7,235 Hong Kong dollars in 2015 and 19, respectively. However, the average expenditure per person for non-overnight visitors has continued to decline from 2,409 Hong Kong dollars in 2015 to just over 2,000 Hong Kong dollars during the pandemic in 2019 and further reduced to 1,278 Hong Kong dollars in the first half of 2023. The consumption of mainland non-overnight visitors has followed a similar trend, decreasing from nearly 2,700 Hong Kong dollars per person in 2015 to 2,200 Hong Kong dollars in 2019, further dropping to 1,350 Hong Kong dollars in the first half of last year. After watching the fireworks display on New Year's Eve in 2023, a large number of mainland tourists in Hong Kong stayed overnight at the station. Rather than spending money on accommodation, they sat on the ground and waited for the border control. Some tourists interviewed mentioned that hotel expenses during Hong Kong holidays are high, so they have to sleep on the streets to save money. The Hong Kong government previously launched Hong Kong Gift Program, distributing 1 million consumption vouchers, each worth 100 Hong Kong dollars. Later in November 2023, another 1 million Hong Kong Night Vibe vouchers were issued, totaling 200 million Hong Kong dollars, excluding administrative fees. Money was distributed, people came, but the government still had to apologize for complaints from mainland tourists about inadequate reception. While the number of visitors entering Hong Kong has decreased, the opposite is true for outbound travel from Hong Kong, with 72 million outbound travelers, most of whom went to mainland China, especially Shenzhen. Many Hong Kongers travel to Shenzhen due to its lower prices compared to Hong Kong. As a result, the streets and supermarkets in Shenzhen were crowded with Hong Kongers. Orange juice costs 9.5 yuan for a large bottle. Organic vegetables are not only fresh but also half the price. Seasonal hairy crabs cost 108 yuan for four, but in Hong Kong, you can only buy one for this price. On January 13, 2024, Costco opened in Shenzhen. On the second day, the store was packed with crowds. Amongst many were Hong Kongers. Mr. Ho and Mrs. Ho, during an interview with HK01 reporters, said they expect to spend at least 5,000 yuan on groceries this time. Mrs. Ho candidly stated, We won't buy anything in Hong Kong anymore. Even if the prices are similar, we'll still go north to shop because it's more comfortable and enjoyable. No matter how difficult it is, we will come here to shop. She gave an example. In Hong Kong, for instance, at the Welcome Supermarkets, there's not much to choose from, and those items have already been picked over and are not fresh, but here, everything is very fresh. She mentioned that rent, wages, and prices in Hong Kong are expensive, and the place is small. Even if Hong Kong supermarket chains try to emulate mainland operations, she believes it won't make much of a difference. According to a report from HK Now News, on January 31, 2024, Shenzhen's total retail sales of consumer goods exceeded a trillion yuan for the first time last year, with a year-on-year -year increase of 7.8%. Experts suggest that this is related to Hong Kong residents shopping in Shenzhen after border reopening. Ms. Chan, a Hong Kong resident, said, The economy isn't doing well this year. I'll be thrifty and won't spend a lot, just around two to 3,000 Hong Kong dollars. Ms. Chan, the owner of a seafood store, remarked, because the market situation is very poor this year, much worse than previous years, 
you can see on the streets, many have gone back to the mainland this year, especially at the Liantang port, where there are long queues of people returning to mainland China. Li Xiuopo, a researcher at the Asia Pacific Institute of Business at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, stated, Since many Hong Kongers are emigrating and remaining locals are spending less or going north to shop, the streets, eateries, and malls in Hong Kong are sparse and desolate, with 9 out of 10 shops vacant. Previously, the government spent over 250 million Hong Kong dollars renovating the 40 year Aberdeen street market to transform it into a modern smart market. After a renovation of nearly 18 months, it officially opened for service in April 2023, but less than six months later, it is already in a rundown state, with many stalls closing. Hong Kong Media Channel C visited here in October 2023. One snack shop owner, Mrs. Wong, mentioned that the worst day's revenue was only 300 Hong Kong dollars, and she worries that tens of thousands spent on renovations won't be recouped. It is known that after the renovation of Aberdeen Street Market, there were 142 stalls set up, with 137 rented out. However, by the end of August 2023, 26 stalls pulled out. Hong Kong YouTuber He He Face has filmed many videos showing Hong Kong markets empty and desolate, and has ended up on a blacklist. One day when he tried to film, in the Whitefield Estate Market, he was stopped. They're preventing people from filming. They seem more nervous, like they're afraid of people knowing their high vacancy rate. Coincidentally, the same day, a Channel C reporter wanted to shoot the market scene, but was intercepted by security. You're filming me? I really have to block it. I need to know when the merchants come out, sir. How do I know if I go over there? Before the reporter could finish, the mail sec- interrupted him. How do the merchants come out? The merchants are over there looking after their shops. Don't bring up so many issues with me. You can say I'm fierce. They are business people. How could they accept your interview? Please don't block my lens. Don't film me either. You're filming me. I suspect you're filming me. Affecting my personal safety. There are no portrait rights in Hong Kong. I know, but you're filming me. You're filming me. Does this scenario remind you of the recent incident at St. Pancras Station in London, where Chinese nationalists harassed a British pianist? Apart from missing the phrase, don't touch her, the scenes are very similar, aren't they? Today's Hong Kong no longer enjoys press freedom. When the Hong Kong government launched initiatives like Hello Hong Kong and Happy Hong Kong to show Hong Kong's return to the international stage and its normalization in early 2023, Bloomberg published an article on March 9, 2023, titled, Hong Kong's New Normal Isn't Fooling Anyone. The article pointed out that despite the government's efforts to promote new development policies, Hong Kong is becoming increasingly Chinese, with its people facing political repression and losing their freedoms. Many Hong Kong people are emigrating or leaving Hong Kong, and the city's attractiveness to foreign investment is decreasing. These situations prove that the government's claim of from chaos to governance, from governance to greater prosperity, is completely unconvincing. Hong Kong's financial secretary, Paul Chan, had previously stated that Hong Kong's finances have been in deficit since the 2019-2020 fiscal year, and the city has been at a loss for five consecutive years. After the Hong Kong government embraced the CCP while ignoring the opinions of millions of Hong Kong citizens, the once vibrant and democratic international center resorted to selling soup dumplings while holding carnivals to salvage its struggling economy. Is the Hong Kong government creating a myth or manufacturing an international joke? The future will soon provide the answer.